If you're a gardener, I'm sure you know the value of attracting birds to the garden to eat some of the plant-eating insects, such as caterpillars. And today we want to visit with you a little bit about the cavity-nesting type birds. And by this, we mean birds that need to inhabit a cavity, whether it's in, in an old tree or in a box such as this. They, don't, they won't make a nest in a shrub. They need some kind of cavity to nest in. And this includes wrens, bluebirds, chickadees, etc. Um, if you're going to buy a birdhouse, there are some things you need to look for. This one is a wren house. And the way we know this is that the diameter of the entry hole is just one inch. That's too small for bluebirds to get into. So this is a wren house. Most birdhouses that are manufactured, you need to check the whole diameter depending on the bird you want to attract. Also, you want to make sure that they've made provisions for ventilation. Some holes on the side, and good birdhouses will have holes on the bottom. This one has a door that slides out on the bottom, has good ventilation holes for drainage, and for easy cleaning. Because after each brood leaves the nest, you need to clean out the nest to keep parasites and such to a minimum. Now, some birdhouses you may find in garden centers have a little perch on the outside. This will probably attract sparrows to the house, and you don't want to do that, so that's not a very desirable feature. Now, this particular birdhouse is almost indestructible. It's made of a combination of concrete and sawdust, so it's very weatherproof and supposedly is very well insulated. It's heavy, though, but it should wear for years and years. And this, too, has a door that slides up and down for cleaning. It has a larger hole on it. This is a bluebird house. They have very precise or exacting demands for the size of hole they will crawl through to nest, so that's important. Now, this is a martin house. You've probably seen a lot of these around neighborhoods. In order to have success with a martin house, you need to mount it near a creek or a farm pond where there are going to be mosquitoes breeding. Because a single martin can eat up to 2,000 mosquitoes in a day. Also, a martin house needs to have plugs that will come with it so you can block the holes in the wintertime. But take these out in February, because that's when the, the martin scouts arrive to find a place for nesting the following spring. And in a martin house, you also need to have it up on either a telescoping or a pivoting type mount and have it mounted high in the air so that they'll feel very secure. You can buy one, they are rather expensive, or you can build one. We have plans for that. And also, Jim's going to show you how to build your own small cavity nesting birdhouse from scratch. We, OSU does have a fact sheet which gives directions for building birdhouses such as this one, and it gives some important information. Even if you're going to buy your own birdhouses, you may want to get this fact sheet because it gives information on, on what size hole you should get for whatever bird that you want. It also gives instructions on maintenance and habitat requirements. Habitat requirements, it, that's an important consideration with any of these birdhouses, whether you make it or buy it. If you're in an urban environment in downtown Tulsa, say, you're not going to be able to attract a bluebird. Bluebirds like open fields with scattered trees, and they won't adapt well to the wooded, very close, large population of a city or urban environment. However, if you're out in a rural area with very few trees, bluebird houses would be ideal to have no problem attracting bluebirds. Conversely, chickadees are woodland birds. In a heavily wooded neighborhood, you could have, it's a perfect environment for chickadees, but if you're out in the open where you'd have good success with bluebirds, if you're far enough away from woods, chickadees will not come to your birdhouses. So you'll need to analyze what habitat and what environment is around your house. That will determine to a large part what types of birds you will be able to successfully attract with the birdhouses. If you look at this birdhouse, this is made from the directions that are in that fact sheet, you will notice very quickly why I am in horticulture and not a carpenter. But it is perfectly adequate for birds. They don't care. One, there are a few items I want to point out from this, from this birdhouse. As Sue mentioned, the size of the hole is very important. This one is made for 
bluebirds. It's an inch and a half in diameter. This front part has been roughened up, several saw cuts, so that parent birds, when they come in, have a place for toe holes to grab onto before they go inside. This front swings out, number one, for cleaning. You should clean after the every brood, and definitely at least once a year to keep down parasites. It has drainage holes in the bottom in case water leaks in, it can drain out. Also, on the inside of the front, it has been roughened, so when the young birds are ready to fledge, that is, leave the nest and go out into the outside world, they can climb up easily and get into get out of the hole and into the outside world. The distance from the hole down to the bottom is important, not only just for the preference of the birds, but to protect them from predators such as cats, other birds, or snakes, so that they cannot reach down in and get to the eggs or the young birds. One other important part about this birdhouse, it needs to be painted. It cannot really be left unfinished such as this, to, and it won't, it won't weather very well that way. You'll need probably three coats of exterior paint to cover all of the outside. Do not paint the inside where the birds are, just the outside for weather protection. It's best to have relatively light colors so that they don't absorb heat. Placement of the birdhouse is also important. As was mentioned with the purple martin house, they enjoy being near water. Bird Bluebird houses, as I said, prefer open spots, and that's where you want to put them. Chickadees, wooded areas, keep them near the trees.